welcome to my channel today's topic is processing of butter as you all know butter is one of the most common dairy product in india today and it has been very popular and important in western countries so we will discuss today about what is butter what is the process what is the standard and quality of butter should be and other details about making the butter and packaging and storage as we all know butter is a fat rich dairy product it is the concentrated milk fat and butter serves as the balance wheel of the dairy industry that means it plays a role of balancing so when there is a surplus milk then it is converted into butter by first separating the fat from the milk and then it is concentrated into butter but when there is a scarcity then the milk which is intended for butter making is used for other essential purpose as such if you see in the milk the the milk fat milk fat remain in emulsion form and that is a kind of oil in water emulsion whereas if we see the butter there it is the major is oil or the fat only a some portion that is around 20% maximum is the water so it is a water in emulsion there is just a reversion from oil in water to water in oil here we will see the definition of butter butter may be defined as a fat concentrate which is obtained by churning cream gathering the fat into a compact mass and then working it as per fss ai 2011 as you know this is the new regulation for quality control of all kind of foods that is the food safety and standards authority of india which comes under the fssa act 2011 so here butter means the fatty product derived exclusively from milk of cow and or buffalo or its products principally in the form of water in oil type of an emulsion now let us see some of the specification of butter firstly it should be free from other animal fats wax animal oils vegetable fats and oils no preservative except common salt no coloring matter except anatto or carotene may be added it must contain not less than 80% of milk fat not more than 1.5% of cod and not more than 3% of common salt diacetyl may be added as a flavoring agent but total diacetyl content must not exceed 4 pa ppm calcium hydroxide sodium bicarbonate sodium carbonate sodium polyphosphates may be added but must not exceed 0.2% so these are some of the specifications for butter here briefly we will see about classification of butter so butter may be classified based on acidity of cream based on salt content based on end use or based on the manufacturing practice so here based on the salt content at the top right we can see that is salted butter or unsalted butter so unsalted butter means it is used for mainly preparation of ghee or butter oil whereas salted butter is having a better flavor and keeping quality in the bottom left we can see based on the manufacturing practice that is pasteurized cream or table butter that is made from pasteurized sweet cream and then desi butter made by churning of desi malai then classification based on the acidity of cream that is bottom right you can see here it can be sweet cream butter which is not at all acidified then secondly mildly acidified butter and thirdly sour cream butter so in case of sweet cream butter non acidified cream is used in case of mildly acidified butter partially acidified sweet cream is used the ph is 5.2 to 6.3 and sour cream butter which is ripened and acidity will be 0.2% or ph 5.1 
here we will see the composition of butter and the FSA, FSSAI standards. The general composition of butter is butter fat 80.2%, moisture 16.3%, salt 2.5% and card 1%. Whereas FSSI standard for butter is particularly for table butter which is used for normal regular use in the table that is moisture 16% maximum, milk fat 80% minimum, milk solids not fat 1.5% maximum and common salt 3%. In case of desi butter, minimum fat is 76. The standard composition of butter are prescribed either as 80% fat or 16% moisture. The food and nutritive value if we see butter is fully rich in dairy fat and it is also the, the important source of fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin E. Okay. Here we can see the flow chart for making butter. We can start with milk or with the cream. So left side you can see receiving of milk, then preheating at 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, then separation of cream by using the centrifugal cream separator. And in between we need to do the grading, weighing, sampling and testing which we have discussed earlier that is the standard procedure in milk processing. In the right side we can see we can directly receive the cream and it has to go for neutralization if there is acidity. Now after getting the cream ready it has to undergo standardization that means it should have minimum fat of 35 to 40 percent. Then it has to undergo pasteurization around 82 to 88 degrees Celsius for no hold or sometime we can go for vac creation. After this it can go for cooling and followed by ripening and sometime cooling followed by aging at 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. After that the most important step is churning. Churning is the step where the fat is accumulated and concentrated. After that washing then salting and working sometime unsalted butter we can make and then packaging and storage at about minus 23 to minus 29 degrees Celsius. So this is the brief flow chart for preparation of butter. Here we can see the flow of operation in the industry diagrammatically. You can follow the red arrow. The first there is milk, there is separation of cream, then it is pasteurized, then it is being cooled and then aging. After that there is churning and working, then the butter is ready. After that there is a bulk packaging, then there is a freezing and storage. After that for retail packaging it will be undergoing thawing, then it is melted and then made into smaller consumer packaging. Then it again it goes for chill storage and then retail distribution. So this is the industrial flow operation in diagrams. Now first thing is about receiving of milk or cream and grading. So we have discussed the flowchart. Now all the steps briefly we are going to understand. The cans of milk or cream are unloaded on the receiving platform of butter making factory. That is the first thing. And then we have to do the grading of the milk or the cream. The purpose of grading is to pay for the product on the basis of its quality. Now here we can see three different grades based on the acidity. The first one is first grade cream which is sweet or slightly sour. The second grade of cream which is sour and coagulated. And the third is rejected cream which will be markedly sour and fermented. As we have mentioned earlier, whenever we are getting the milk or cream, we have to do the sampling, weighing and testing for proper quality. So first is the sampling that is the representative sample should be drawn for testing purpose. Then there is weighing the cans of cream which are then weighed and the weight recorded for accounting and other purposes. And finally there is testing after taking the sample. The cream samples are then tested for fat, solids not fat, acidity etc by standard method. So after doing this only we can really accept the milk or cream or make the proper grading. 
Now once the cream is accepted, the next important step is neutralization. So many times the cream will be acidic, so it has to be neutralized. So for that, determination of correct acidity in the cream is important, followed by amount of neutralizer to be added. That has to be calculated. And then adding neutralizer to cream by correct method is very important. And finally, checking the results by retesting acidity. After the neutralizer is added, we need to check again the acidity, whether it is enough. So these are the important steps in neutralization. And the procedure for adding neutralizer is, neutralizer should be dissolved in potable water and diluted for 10 to 15 times. Then distribute and mix it quickly by stirring vigorously for 5 to 10 minutes. And after this, temperature of cream should be 29 to 32 degrees Celsius, not more than that. So this is the procedure for adding the neutralizer. This is in continuation about neutralization. The lime is commonly used like calcium hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide or sometimes soda is used like caustic soda or sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate or sodium sesquicarbonate. The butter for long term storage should be from cream with 0.06 to 0.08 percent acidity and butter for early consumption cream acidity can be 0.25 to 0.3 percent. That means if we have to store the butter long time the acidity should be very less whereas if we can consume the butter early in that case little higher acidity of the cream is okay. So double neutralization, sometime when the acidity is very high in the cream, double neutralization or two step neutralization is done. First use lime neutralizer to bring down the cream acidity to 0.3 to 0.4%. Then next use the soda neutralizer to bring down the cream acidity to desired level. So after neutralization, the next process is pasteurization which we have discussed in details in case of milk. So here we will not discuss details about it. In case of butter, the pasteurization is done at 82 degrees Celsius, 80 to 82 degrees Celsius for no hold, either on batch method or on continuous method. Sometime pasteurization can be done by vac creation, which we have discussed earlier. That is pasteurization by creating vacuum, under vacuum. That is called vac creation. Now the next step after pasteurization is cooling and aging of cream. So after pasteurization the cream has to be cooled and then aged to make churning possible. The cream is cooled by lowering the temperature and aged by holding at this temperature for few hours. The cream will not churn until the butter fat in the fat globules has at least partially solidified. So by this cooling the butter molecule is partially solidified or crystallized then only churning becomes feasible for separating all the fat globules and coalescing them into a solid mass of butter. Here is little more details about cooling and aging of cream. The high cooling and aging temperature that will shorten the churning period and large fat loss in buttermilk will happen and the butter will be with soft body. If we have lower cooling and aging temperature, it will prolong the churning period and will decrease the fat loss and the butter will be with firm body. The aging period should be at least 2 to 4 hours, but preferably it should be 15 to 16 hours, that is overnight, then only it will be perfect for churning. Now the optimum temperature for cooling and aging of cream depends on the composition of fat, the size of fat globules, fat percentage of the cream, the period of aging, the temperature of churning and the acidity of cream. So these factors are important to decide about the temperature of cooling and aging for cream. Now ripening of cream. 
Ripening refers to the fermentation of cream with desirable starter cultures for getting certain special benefits or flavors. So firstly, there is lactic acid producing starter, commonly Streptococcus lactis and Streptococcus cremoris. These two cultures are used or the aroma producing cultures or starters that is mostly they will produce diacetyl that is Streptococcus diacetylactis, Leuconostus citrovorum and Leuconostus dextranicum. These are the cultures, starter cultures commonly used for aroma. Now these shutter cultures should be added in proper proportion to the standardized pasteurized cooled cream that is around 20 to 22 degrees Celsius that is the ripening temperature and the proportion should be 0.5 to 2 percent that is the culture to be added. After being thoroughly mixed the cream is incubated at 21 degrees Celsius for 15 to 16 hours. So this is the period for fermentation and called as ripening temperature. Now we will discuss about the diacetyl in butter and its importance. The typical flavor of butter from ripened cream is mainly the effect of diacetyl to a smaller extent of acetic or propionic acids. There is no diacetyl in sweet cream. So normal sweet cream there is no diacetyl but after fermentation with the specific aroma producing culture diacetyl is produced and that gives the flavor. The flavor intensity in butter depends on its diacetyl contents. In case of ripened cream butter we will have around 2.5 ppm and rarely above 4 ppm of diacetyl. The actually diacetyl is produced from its mother component acetyl methyl carbinol. In the bottom right we can see the diacetyl content in butter and the flavor intensity. When it is 0.2 to 0.6 ppm there is mild flavor. When it is 0.7 to 1.5 ppm it will have the full flavor. Now we will understand churning. Churning is the most important step for making butter. So butter making process as I have told there are several stages of which this is the most important step. If we see by definition churning of cream consists of agitation at a suitable temperature until the fat globules adhere forming larger and larger masses until a relatively complete separation of fat and serum occurs. So as I explained in the previous diagram in the normal cream there is oil in water emulsion but after churning the, the, the oil separates and then we will get water in oil emulsion. So churning is a process of breaking the emulsion and accumulating the fat globule and making the solid mass. Now let us learn little more details about churning. Churning is a violent mechanical agitation which breaks the emulsion of fat in serum and induces the clumping of fat globules. During churning, the membrane material which preserves the identity of fat globules is disrupted, permitting the liquid fat to spread out and act as an adhesive between them. As a result, the initial oil in water emulsion of cream is reversed into a water in oil emulsion. So churning is done by a agitation where the membrane of the fat globule is broken and the actual fat molecule comes out and then they spread and join together and makes the bigger mass and that helps in making the mass of butter and the phase of emulsion is changed in case of cream it is oil in water now in the butter it is water in oil. So further in continuation about churning, this is the emulsion composed of continuous phase of fat and water as finely dispersed droplets. The coalescence of fat globules does not occur properly when the fat is either all solid or all liquid. Thus the temperature for churning is carefully controlled to give an appropriate ratio of solid to liquid. So first thing here to understand is 
After the breaking of fat globules, the liquid fat comes out and which becomes the continuous phase in which the water droplets are distributed and the emulsion becomes water in oil emulsion. And in this coalescence of globules, the temperature is very, very important. So part of the fat should be in solid phase and part of it should be in liquid phase. That's why the temperature is very crucial and that is 8 to 11 degree Celsius. Now when the fat is concentrated into butter grains, the remaining part of the cream, that is the water portion comes out and it makes the buttermilk and that butter, buttermilk is used for other purposes which we will discuss later. So in this diagram once again let us understand about the formation of fat globules and making of butter. So in the right side top we can see the normal milk where there is yellow color fat globules surrounded by membrane. Then there is casein protein and the milk serum as the continuous phase. In the middle we can see during the cream separation all the fat globules join together and makes the cream. And at the bottom we can see there is a phase reversion or inversion where the cream it is oil in water emulsion whereas in butter it is water in oil emulsion due to the breakdown of fat globules it the fat globules makes the continuous phase and the major part become the butter only minor part is the water in the left side diagram we can easily understand that intact milk fat globule then there is foaming and breaking of the membrane and then coalescence of fat globule and butter grains are formed during churning now after churning, the next step is washing. Washing is a process to remove the rest of the water from the uh, butter after churning. So when the cream has been churned, the churner is stopped in the proper position, a drain plug fixed and the buttermilk removed through a sieve. The purpose of washing, to remove all loose buttermilk adhering to butter grains so as to reduce the card content. To correct defects in the firmness of butter by proper adjustment of wash water temperature. To decrease the intensity of certain off flavor. So if there are any off flavor particularly due to acidity and all, all this flavor will be washed with this water and it will be reduced. So overall this is a process to collect the remaining watery portion or buttermilk with the cream. So the cream becomes much more perfect and solid. Now let us understand the procedure of washing. After it has been drained, chilled water is added to the butter grains in the churn. That is after removing the butter milk, the water is added, chilled water. The temperature of water is usually 1 to 2 degrees Celsius lower than the churning temperature of cream and an equal amount to the quantity of buttermilk removed. So we have already removed the buttermilk, the same amount of chilled water should be added. After a few revolutions, the wash water is drained out. Normally one wash is enough for good quality butter. As I have told earlier, the complete process of churning happens in a stainless steel drum in which the revolution process is there during that agitation of churning. So after adding the water, the same revolution is done for washing the butter. Now removing of butter. So after the washing is over, the lump of butter mass has to be removed from the churner. Removing butter from the churn, this is done either manually or by gravity or mechanically by compressed air. In the last case, that is the compressed air when we use, the butter has to be a little bit soft, then only it is suitable. Now the next step is salting and working. So salting refers to the addition of salt to the butter but there can be sometime unsalted butter also as I told at the beginning. The purpose of salting is to improve the keeping quality, to enhance the taste and flavor and to increase the overrun. So what is overrun? That is the increase in volume from the original which we will see later. The amount and quality of salt. Usually common salt is added at the rate of 2 to 2.5 percent of the butter fat that is the weight. The quality of salt should be good and it should be free from any extraneous matter and germs. Excessive salt damages the flavor of butter. So high, high level of salt should be avoided. 
Now method of salting, it is done by three ways, dry salting, wet salting and brine salting. Dry salting means the crystal of powder of salt is sprinkled over the surface of the butter during working. Working means mixing of the butter in a butter worker, that is a kind of kneading actually. Then wet salting, that is calculated amount of salt is wetted in the least amount of portable water and then sprinkled over the butter during working and the brine salting that is the salt is added in the form of saturated solution of brine that is a saturated solution of brine salt is called as brine so this is the three ways of adding the salt in the butter now about butter working butter working means kneading of butter this is a specific wooden device where the butter is mixed continuously and a kind of kneading is done the purpose of butter working is to completely dissolve, uniformly distribute and properly incorporate the salt. To expel buttermilk and to control the moisture content of the butter. To fully incorporate the added makeup water in the butter and to bring the butter grains together into a compact mass. So the working also helps in improving the texture of the butter by making a compact mass. Now about working procedure that is the butter working procedure. The working should be continued until the butter has a compact body, a closely knit grain, a tough waxy texture and an even distribution of salt and moisture. The overworking should be avoided that can cause damage to the body and texture of the butter whereas underworking also should be avoided that can cause a leaky butter. So both are harmful, overworking and underworking. The working increases the air content of butter which affects the density of butter, its microbial spoilage and oxidative spoilage. So these are the adverse effect of working. It can affect the density, it can in a microbial spoilage or oxidative spoilage. Now let us discuss about packaging of butter. So when the working is over, we can do the hand molting and wrapping, but that is slow and cumbersome. Then we can have mechanical molding, patting and wrapping that reduces the labor cost and losses suitable for large scale operation. The common packaging materials which is used for butter is parchment paper or its substitutes which is like vegetable parchment paper or butter paper commonly called sometimes cellophane, pliofilm or polyethene. These are all plastic materials, polymers. Then we can use aluminum foil or laminates. Nowadays these are becoming more common like moisture and grease proof. These lam laminates or aluminum foils, they are non-tenting and non-toxic, opaque and airtight. Then there are tin plate cans. So cans are also used for packing the butter. It prevents the escape of melted butter, absorption of foreign flavors. So these are the different options for packaging of butter. Now about storage and distribution. The temperature of commercial cold storage of butter ranges from minus 23 to minus 29 degrees Celsius. There is invariably some flavor deterioration of butter while it is in commercial cold storage. Thus, fishy flavor develops in salted acid butter. Bacterial deterioration plays a negligible part while chemical degradation plays a leading role. So because it is in minus 20 and below, so the bacterial growth cannot happen or spoilage cannot happen, but slow rate of chemical oxidation is possible. The distribution, the temperature during the entire period of distribution should preferably be at minus 18 to minus 29 degrees Celsius. It may also be sold in retail trade from a deep fridge or refrigerated butter box. Sometime in the smaller outlet, they can keep it in refrigerator with a butter box. So this is about the storage and distribution of butter. Now finally about overrun. It is the amount of butter which exceeds the fat present in cream is called overrun. So if we take a cream, we know how much fat is there by percentage. So if we calculate that much 
butter only should come but actually we will get more that is called overrun so overrun may be defined as the increase in the amount of butter made from a given amount of fat it is usually expressed in percentage so overrun is caused by the presence of other than fat molecule that is the some amount of moisture curd salt etc in the butter now importance of overrun it is a source of profit to the butter maker and also helps to check the efficiency of factory operation so butter maker indicates the efficiency of operation and also indicates the profit of making butter now we are at the end of today's lecture so let me summarize today we have discussed about the butter processing starting with the definition the composition the fssi standard the quality aspect and then the details process with a flow chart for butter making and different steps starting from collecting the receiving of cream or milk then sampling and testing then cream separation or pasteurization and then there is neutralization followed by actual churning then separation of butter then washing working salting etc and finally packaging storage and distribution so this is very briefly about the processing of butter from dairy cream thank you